Hayden Milne, 24 hours on, does it feel like your life has changed? Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know if my life's changed, but it's definitely been an awesome experience. I've loved it all. Mate, I know we're like eighth in line. You've certainly become popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been like, crazy, the sport. Yeah, no more darts down under exclusives or anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mate, the, uh, the match itself, you enjoyed it. I mean, it must have felt like a freight train was coming at you a little bit. Um, you won't have obviously caught up on what people were saying on the commentary or anything, but uh, they were enjoying the fact that they felt you were going for three bullseyes for the 150. Um, in fact, Stuart Pike called that the highlight of his whole trip. Um, it, um, obviously, you enjoyed yourself. I mean... Even for the fact of, of sharpening your darts with Michael's sharpener before yeah. the match, um, it must have felt really good to be on stage. I mean, I've, you know, we've experienced Cody Harris coming through, Tahuna Irwin, um, at a young age like yourself coming through. Um, it's it's a unique and exciting time for you. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, Michael was a, a really um, a class act, you know. Three darts fell out of the board, and I thought, oh, it doesn't matter, whatever. It's only practice. And then he handed me a, a file, and I was like, oh, no, that's quite a respectable thing to do. I don't even have a, a file myself. And uh, <laughs> it was quite cool of him to do that, yeah. Um, the 180, I mean, it was quickly <laughs> dismissed with a 116 checkout, but I'm not sure anybody in the room cared or knew at that stage. Um, it was it was fine. Like, one more thing to say, I've come on this stage, I'm doing it. You know, speaking to people like Ray Smith and Damon Hedder, and, and their game stepped up when they learnt to be able to put away big scores in that situation, no matter what was going on. I mean, there must be little victories out of the fact that you played a guy who threw 99 and you're not used to that yet as much as Darren and Hopes and all those guys like to throw excellent darts, um, it, you can kind of feel like, you know what, I can play with these big guys now? Sort of. My game <laughs> was pretty, I don't know, felt average, but maybe if... Uh, yeah, I learned to control the emotions maybe a bit better and while I'm on the stage probably would help. <laughs> yeah. Look, it, it's a difficult thing. Obviously, even following up after last night, you, you know, as I said, all these different new things for you, media commitments, people talking to you. Um, I mean, I know you've got good advice. There's the plug for them at Beast, But um, I know that um, it's a very different thing to experience for the very first time. What are you going to do now? You've obviously got Dunedin. You, you've got hopefully the world youth. I keep saying you're there, but you, you, you're going to be there, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, what what do you take from this and where do you go from now? Um, I'm not sure what I can take away from this. Obviously, definitely need to improve my game on stage. But like I said um, to another reporter, I don't really know how to, get better on stage when you don't get this kind of experience ever really um so just trying to improve my ground game and uh if i know i can play at average quite high then surely when i'm on stage i should be able to be confident enough to do it as well and the thing for you is it's not a matter of just rocking up to events and winning them i mean it was a fantastic win that you had in the qualifier but you know you are going to be facing people like darren heroini like hopes like Ben Robb, Warren Parry, Bernie Smith, they, I mean, they all run, I could keep going, but they all run off the, the tongue. New Zealand darts is at that level. You might not be throwing 90s all the time to qualify, but you're going to have to throw high 80s just to even get through a, a tournament in New Zealand now. You are, yeah. And I'm expecting um, probably in the, in the next year that it's going to go even higher with the averages, you know, there's, more than just, you know, five top players now, you know, maybe a couple of years ago we would be, there'd be five like elite players you'd be trying to, you'd be lucky to beat. And now it's like there's, you know, 15 players in the room and you're like, who's going to win? You never know. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, first round you could play AJ. Like, I mean, you, you're literally looking at world-class players from the first round. That'll only help your game like it's helped Australia in, you know, places like Queensland where, 
you know, you could play Brendan McCausland in the first round and you're looking yeah. around. But I think one of the important things, I guess, for you now to aim is, and again, the, the commentary was talking about, wow, we're going to look forward to seeing you back on this stage. I'm like, wow, that's a big step <laughs> to get back on the stage. But like you said, playing those stage events really has to be the aim so that hopefully um, in a couple of years' time you can follow in the footsteps of Ben and Hopes and get over to the PDC um tour card situation all right that's a that's a floor tournament so a bit more used to it but the pressure is something different um you know as much as the stage is good you're going to make your money from these floor events aren't you yeah you've got to perform on the floor to even get a chance to go on stage really that's right all right mate well congratulations i know brock you said last night once you have one taste of it you want more and more i hope that taste remains despite what michael did to you (laughs) And we wish you all the very best, and I'm sure we'll catch up with you, Dars Down Under, when you've stopped to talking to about a million other New Zealand <laughs> outlets, buddy. Cheers, I appreciate it. Thank you.